Hey YouTube, it's Caleb with Little Reptiles, and today we're going to talk about something I've long and thought about for a long time, and uh, no, it's not Venomous Snake, this buck is just here to help me. It's just me and Curtis, Matt's on vacation, so there's no one to run back and forth and fetch snakes. Um, but today, we are going to talk about het influences and how they can or cannot be helpful. So, I have long thought about and have long thought over time that hets and double hets and stuff like that sometimes just make really pretty snakes even without the visual part. For whatever reason, there are they, they look better in my opinion. And I'm going to show you some examples and why and we're going to talk about it and you can tell me in the comments if I'm crazy or if you believe it or you know there might be something slightly to it and then we can talk about how you can use it to your advantage. Um, so this snake here is a bumblebee um, and I didn't have any bumblebees I could show that were not hets um, but if I put them side by side you would see there's just way more yellow in this thing it ages really nicely it looks really good it's very clean I bought this as a pastel spider possible het clown possible het pied possible het exanthic and I was looking at it and it is absolutely incredibly look incredible looking and so I bought it and lo and behold it proved out to be all three um, which was what my suspicion was just because the more hats I have noticed when you're making triples and double hats and stuff like that you notice it more than just your single hats um, and we're gonna get into that even more um, so this right here this is just an orange dream that you can see visually this is an orange dream what it is full genetics is this is an orange dream 100% het desert ghost 66% het clown or cryptic possible het albino because it's that mom who's pos het I haven't proved it out yet but I think it's going to prove out so there's a potential for three hets floating in there and when you look at most orange dreams on morph market at wherever Sometimes it's hard to tell if Orange Dream in there. Orange Dream sometimes looked like just a nice normal. There is no doubt that Orange Dream is in this snake. It's got very nice banding. You know, when we first cut the egg, we thought we hit the Krypton at first because there was so much banding, we couldn't see the head. And so, again, this is one that I think it's going to prove out the cryptic or clown and potentially that albino as well. And you can just tell by the difference between just a standard orange dream and and actually I can even show you this is a grown-up version so the color is not a real great example because obviously as they age they brown out but look at the pattern difference this thing has alien heads this thing is striped like a tiger all right this is just a straight orange dream where this is an orange dream with all those possible heads drastic difference right and so we're going to look at a few more examples, and these I have side-by-side -side comparisons, right? So right here, ow, these are actually siblings. I'm going to put you back because you seem to want to run. And this one's being a little turd, right? These are both Exanthic 66% Het Ghost. I don't know how well the camera is picking up on it, but this one is a lot lighter. There's a little more white in this, around these blacks. I mean, this has some of it. But this goes up higher. It's a lighter snake. There's a little less, you're being a stinker, a little less darkness to it. Um, so, like, if I was going to make, and this is where you can start using it to your benefit. If you're looking to get into double recessives and you, you don't want to pay uh, the price to get multiple hets, you can look at post hets. Now, with, with genetic testing, I don't know if that's necessarily the way to go. Maybe you do want to invest more on a guaranteed het. But if you are a gambling person and you are buying pos hats, look for things like that. I'm going to buy this one because, or sorry, this one, because it's lighter in my opinion. It looks like it's going to prove out in my opinion. And as you look at more over time, you're going to be able to see it more. Now, it's not a guarantee, right? I'm not saying this is the foolproof plan, but I'm going to show you another example and you're going to look at it and you're going to be like, yeah, I see what you're saying. And so here we have... A lesser pastel, 100% het desert ghost, 66% het cryptic or clown. 
here is a Lesser Pastel 66% Het Cryptic or Clown. Same exact genetics. They're both DG for sure, 100%. One 66% head, or they're both 66% head clown or cryptic. Look, again, look how much brighter this one is. Look at the tail pattern. You guys are all hissy today. You know, it still has some of that same pattern, but look how much more blushed in there it is. It's almost white and black. It is just the difference I'm hoping it's picking up on camera is, I mean, drastically different. These are two very different looking snakes with the exact same genetics. Now, that doesn't mean, again, I'm going to say this multiple times in this video, that doesn't mean this is a guaranteed. But if you are wanting to gamble, make that bet, whatever, what have you, I would try and compare it to others. And what looks lighter, doesn't have to be lighter, but there's something different, more clean, lighter, better looking. A really good example, then that's the one I would gamble on. And that way, even if it doesn't, you still have the best looking example of that to make good looking examples of snakes. And so, but that is true for not just recessives, right? There are genes that don't really play a huge role, like scaleless head. If scaleless proves to not be viable, that is a gene that I, for years, and you can go back and check the receipts, I have said there will always be a market for scaleless head. May not be crazy, but if Scaleless doesn't prove viable, I think there's a market because, and we've sold all of them, I believe. I'm looking real quick. Actually, no, I have one right here. Hey, little guy. This is a pastel yellow belly Scaleless head. Look at that yellow belly. That is the nicest yellow belly you will ever see. And that's because it's a scaleless head. I have noticed on scaleless head, things like pinstripe and yellow belly and other genetics, they just look drastically different. And so sometimes you can use that to your advantage and make cool snakes might increase the, you know, even if you're not trying to um, really dive heavily into a project, making hets with it sometimes might not monetarily increase the value, but it might increase the value of wanting to get your snakes because they just look better. Um, so ways to use that to your advantage. Uh, but that's what I believe. It's something I've long thought and maybe I'm crazy. Curtis, questions? Um, so you would probably have to visually look at the snakes instead of just looking at pictures to yes. see the difference. Yes, yes. Um, I would guess on a lot of cases, I mean, other than like, you guys are turds today. Other than this crazy yellow belly, um, yeah, you're probably gonna wanna see them in person. It's probably not gonna pop up in camera as easy. Um, and if at all, if you're at a show and they've got multiple, man, ask, cause a lot of times what we'll do when we're at a show is we'll have a snake here and the same with the snake genetics on the other side so that way they're not next to each other. Um, so that way it doesn't, you know, you get to a point where you, if you have all these bells or all these pies next to each other, it doesn't look super diverse. Um, so, man, if you're at a show and they've got two of the exact same genetics and they're on the op ends like that, I still see them both next to each other. You know, I, I don't think there's any uh, vendor that will tell you no. But, yeah, definitely seeing them in person. But that's also something beyond just buying that might be helpful when it comes to holdbacks. You're trying to pick your hold back and you've got pos heads. You know, not only are you gonna wanna pick the nicer one just to further that project, but that nicer one is likely gonna be more, more likely to me, gonna be het than not. Um, again, there's no scientific proof for that. There's no evidence other than just what I just showed you and just what I've seen. And, and that's okay if you don't agree. You know, over time you're gonna see things that I don't see, you're gonna, you know, just over time, you're going to eyeball things and be like, you know, there's a snake that we had to assist feed early. And then we started assist feeding it earlier than what we usually do. But it's just because I've been now, now feeding babies for so long that I just have a knack for, oh, uh, we should do this now instead of waiting a little bit longer or whatever, whatever our parameters are. This baby's going to be ready at this point or these eggs are ready earlier. But, you know, we just, just like Curtis noticed before we did that, 
you know, we notice females usually ovulate four t after they miss four meals in a row. So now every time we feed after four missed in a row, that's what a piece of paper is good for, we check to see if there's ovulations. And quite a more often than not, it's either right there or it's getting ready to be right there. So it's going to be something that just over time you can just, you know, I'm not saying you're going to be able to pick it out right away, but I do think over time you're going to be able to notice it more, especially now that the market shifts more towards doubles and triples and quad heads and all these different recesses and things like that. So any other questions? No. Nope. All right, YouTube, we're going to head on over to Patreon and talk about I don't know what because I probably should have saved the how you can use that to your benefit Patreon, but I'll figure something out and we'll see you next time.